Hi, I'm Wes Allen with DM Tales, and today I'm going to be talking about a new book by John Peterson. This is my review of Game Wizards. Let's roll it. So right off the bat, I want to thank the OSR RPG Facebook group for making me aware that this game exists in the first place. I would have never known that it was out there if you had not pointed me out to it. So really, thank you for this. It was an amazing ride. And the reason why it was an amazing ride for me is because Game Wizards, Peterson's narrative, covers two things that I absolutely adore. First is history. I'm a history buff. I love to delve back into biographies and read old letters and see what people were thinking at times. That's just really how I'm wired. And it also covers tabletop role-playing games, which is a hobby I obviously love. I have a YouTube channel based on it. So I could not put Game Wizards down, and I'm excited to review it for you now. At the same time, I'm not going to go into too many specifics that Peterson goes into in the book. I don't want to spoil the narrative for you. It really is that enjoyable. I don't want to unravel how he unfolds this story for you. I want you to discover it for yourself. That should be a clue as to whether or not I'm going to recommend this book. So instead, I want to talk about what went into the design of this book. I want to point out the depth that Peterson went into in order to construct this narrative, as well as point out some of the narrative hooks that he uses in order to make this narrative so compelling. To me, that's really what makes the book so special. I do want to point out two specifics that are part of the book, just so you can come into it understanding it a little bit better. The first is this. If you think that tabletop role-playing factionalism is a new thing, you know, indie publishers versus Wizards of the Coast or OSR games versus D&D 5E uh, or, you know, fantasy role-playing games versus more modern takes, this book kind of lays all those thoughts to rest. Factionalism has been part of this hobby space from the very earliest moments it existed. And this kind of lays that out and shows that that's just so. It's not a great thing about our hobby, but it's reality. We need to accept it so that we can deal with it in the present. The other thing is this. If you're looking for a book that is either going to vindicate your heroes, whether that's Dave Arneson or Gary Gygax, or punish the villains we've created in our shared D&D lore, this book will disappoint you. Game Wizards points out that... TSR and early D&D were things that were created by flawed people. They were not incompetent, nor were they overtly evil, but nor were they unfallible geniuses or perfect saints. They were a mishmash. It was created by people, and people have flaws, and they have blind spots, and all of that went into the early history of D&D and the construction of TSR itself. And what Game Wizards allows us to do, without exonerating or vilifying anyone, is to celebrate the fact that this is a game made by people. Because we're people too, with the same flaws and the same short-sightedness and the same blind spots. This is just how people are. So why do I think this book is so good? Well, I think that the strength of the book is that it pulls back the curtain on that shared D&D lore that the community likes to share amongst itself. And by doing that, it throws us into a narrative that is both familiar and alien. It's going to highlight things that we may have never heard before, or it's going to paint someone into a different light that the community reflection on this person might not agree with. And so I think that's really a strength. The fact that it does this through a trove of primary source materials, as any historical record should, is absolutely amazing. And what Peterson dug up in order to make this book a reality, to let the people who are described in this book reveal themselves in their own thoughts, in their own words, in their own reflections as much as possible, that's really cool. And, you know, he pulls out 
things that are obvious, like editorials from Dragon Magazine, because that was the print magazine of the day, and that's where a lot of this stuff played out in public. But he also goes into things like the internal TSR newsletter called Random Events, and he dug stuff up that I would have never seen before. He looks at old comics that were drawn from the earliest days of TSR and throws them out. That's really neat. And he goes into things like court documents that are now in the public record or even personal correspondence and journal entries, which are now part of private collections. Peterson gathers all this material together in order to create a narrative, his retelling of the earliest history of D&D and TSR. And he does so really well. The fact that he relies so much on primary source material that's from the day and not even reflections of people who are doing interviews now 30, 40 years later is really telling. It is remarkable and it lends this book uh, an air of authenticity that it might have lacked otherwise. And the cool thing is when you're flipping through the book and all of a sudden you see a photograph of one of these primary source documents that he references in the narrative, it sparks this moment of delight to know that these things are really not just abstract realities, that they are in fact real and that they testify to the reality of this story that is part of all of our lives because we play tabletop role-playing games to this very day. That's really cool. And really at the heart of this story is a narrative. It is a story. And Peterson uses a couple of literary techniques in order to make it a compelling story. But the one that he leans on perhaps the most, at least in my read through, this is what I brought out, is foreshadowing. And it's really cool because if you are a person who is even a little bit familiar with the story of TSR's rise and fall in the late 70s, early 80s, then you'll see these foreshadowing events and realize that these are signal flares telling you where the story is going to go, but you still don't know how you're going to get there. And if you're someone who comes into this and you have no idea what the history of TSR or the early history of D&D is, all that foreshadowing, when it finally pays off in the narrative, is going to be this terrific aha moment. That's what was going on here that really makes the book so engaging for people who are familiar and unfamiliar with this history. It's really a remarkable thing that he has done to create a narrative that's going to appeal to folks who are immersed in this hobby space and those who might not be immersed into it. So do I recommend this book? If you haven't picked it up by now, yes, absolutely, wholeheartedly do I recommend this book. This is worth your time to read. And yeah, I have to admit that nostalgia plays a significant factor into this. The main events of this narrative occur in the time where I'm entering the hobby space. I started with Moldvay's basic set way back in 1980 or 1981 when I was seven or eight years old. So this is part of my history. So that's really why I'm drawn to it. So nostalgia is a factor. But at the same time, it is a true and a real history. Its reliance on primary source materials, the way that it constructs the narrative, uh, the way that it tries to show people in their own voices, it really is a compelling history book in and of itself. So it's worth the read. This isn't to say that there aren't things that I would have loved to have in there. I would have loved to see more. Again, the nostalgia comes into play of what Tom Moldvay's journey was. He kind of blips in and out. Or even Frank Menser's role inside TSR at this time. Both these figures, and to some extent Zeb Cook as well, they are almost like minor NPCs in the story, and I would have loved to seen a little bit more of what was going on in their journeys, but this isn't the story Peterson was telling. I'd also love to have seen a little bit of how the success of Unearthed Arcana's original publication did to Gary Gygax's psychology and what he thought that meant about the future of TSR. It's not really brought up much in Peterson's narrative, and I think that would have helped contribute a little bit to the climax of where he goes. But the cool thing is, is while Peterson's narrative was focused elsewhere, those stories now remain to be told. And because Peterson has unearthed all these primary source materials and shown people where to look for it, these are things that can be told now. And that's really amazing. But one thing that Game Wizards really points out to me 
is the fact that we still play this game decades later, a game which was, if you read the narrative, a historical accident that was waiting to happen. That's amazing. And the fact that it spawned an entire industry, all because this space was created by TSR way back in the day. That's really amazing. And it's something we should appreciate. Peterson helps us to do that. Game Wizards, the epic battle for D&D, is for sale at most bookstores. You can either order it or you know go to the beast that is Amazon. It is currently on sale for $22.46 at Amazon as a paperback and a little bit over $18 for the Kindle edition. This is well worth having in your library. Now, I am grateful because over the last couple of weeks, I have gotten offered a lot of review copies. And so next week, I am going to be looking at an absolutely bizarre role-playing game called Warpland. Looking forward to it. Until then, happy playing, everyone.